welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. Today I'm going to make a pheasant pate or pheasant terrine. It's going to be amazing. It's going to have some pistachio nuts and all sorts of stuff. It's going to be lovely. I will now run you through the ingredients. So I hope that is helpful to have the recipe on the screen there and I've put measurements in metric and imperial. The ingredients are some sliced streaky bacon, there's one whole pheasant, brandy, pistachio nuts, we'll need one clove of garlic for this, the herbs, thyme and sage and that is minced pork belly. Apologies for those who are a bit squeamish. If you have no intention of prepping your own pheasant, then perhaps just forward through this bit because it's a bit gross. But it's important and I thought some of you might enjoy watching or at least appreciate how to prepare a pheasant, which is the same as preparing a chicken, effectively. It's just a bit smaller. So I'm taking off the legs. Try to keep the oyster meat, which is underneath. You go around that. With jointing, the whole process really, what you want to do is leave the bones as clean as possible, meaning you've taken as much meat as you possibly can from the animal. In this case, a pheasant. So once the legs are removed, I'm gonna take the breasts off. You need to run your knife as close to the backbone as possible, just either side. You follow the carcass around and at the end of the breast where it meets the wing bone there's a socket there you just wiggle your knife you'll find your way through persevere there we go repeat on the other side So I'm going to reserve all the bones and freeze those down and shortly there will be a pheasant consomme recipe. Keep your eyes peeled for that. But for now, we just want to remove the meat of any bits of skin, bone, sinew, gristle. So you can use your fingertips to find it. The skin I will be throwing away. Everything else is going to go in that consomme. What I've done there is I've skinned the breasts and just removed any bits of wing at the end. Now you want to remove the skin from the legs. It comes off quite easy. Once you've got the skin off, cut them in half, separate the thigh from the drumstick. And then we're gonna get the thigh bone out. So what you see me doing there is just running the, the knife either side of the thigh bone then underneath it, all the way through, and then just make sure there's no bits of connective tissue, any bits of gristle or sockets. There's the other thigh done. The drumsticks are a bit more tricky. The same to start with, down the either side of the bone, but there's also a lot of tendons, and they're really quite tough in these, because these are wild game birds. You'll just see me do it with my fingers. Just gotta wiggle them out once I've got that bone out.
So what you can see me doing here with one of the breasts is I took off the little fillet, which is the same as if it was a chicken breast, and then I cut the rest of it up. I want six little strips, and those eagle-eyed of you out there will notice there was only five bits. So I'm going to need one more bit from the other breast, but the rest of the meat I'm just dicing up about half a centimetre or so dice. At the same time, just use your fingertips if you feel any bits of gristle or tendons, that's the time to get them out. There's me thinking, how many pieces? Is it five or six? A bit like Dirty Harry, isn't it? Anyway, there you go. You remembered the rest of it. I'm just going to chop up as well. And then we're going to chop up the offal. So get the pork in, the brandy in, and then I'm gonna pick in some thyme after I've given it a thorough mix with my hands. And then I'm gonna give it an absolute ton of seasoning. When you have cold pâtés and terrines, you'll be surprised how much seasoning they need. But I'll show you a little trick later how to make sure it's right. bits of meat and I like to just flambe with a bit of extra brandy it's completely optional up to you whether you do it at all there you go a bit in the pan let it flambe and setting fire to your kitchen is also optional uh, those flames are a lot bigger than I thought they were gonna be anyway who needs eyebrows this could have been done earlier on it's fine doesn't matter what order really but I'm just roughly breaking down the pistachio nuts. Not too small, you wanna see those pieces in there. A little technique for slicing up the leaves of sage is to sit them on top of each other, roll them up, and slice them into something very fancy called a chiffonade. It sounds so much better in French, doesn't it? Other than just sliced sage, chiffonade, it's great. And a bit of garlic there, just gonna roughly chop that up. This is how you test if your meat is seasoned nice. Put a tiny bit in the pan, make sure it's really thin so it doesn't take very long to cook, and then it won't take long to cool down. And so once it's cooled down, you taste it, and if it's yummy, it's enough. If it's a little bit bland, add a bit more salt and pepper. Straightforward, really. Now I'm gonna line the terrine 
or the whatever it is, a loaf tin, doesn't matter. Plenty of cling film. And what I do, I just like to get the terrine slightly damp. Just, I just run it under the cold tap and shake off the excess. And that's going to help to stick this cling film to it. And you want to take care when you put the cling film in to try to make sure you really get it into the corners so that it's not tight because um, you want your terrine to have a proper shape. This is where you get a bit pedantic. Use your hands, but then what I do here is just use a dry cloth. There you go. That's probably the best way of doing this. And then we've got to line this with this with the streaky bacon. What I wish I'd done is I wish I'd kept my streaky bacon in the fridge the whole time, but it wasn't, it was out since I showed you the ingredients. So it had gone to a bit room temperature and was a little bit harder to work with. So there's my advice to you. Take the bacon straight from the fridge. Now this is really, really thin streaky bacon. If you can't find that, I mean you can go to the butcher and you can ask them to slice them for you that way. But there is a little technique you can use. If you put a thicker streaky uh, bit of bacon on a board and just run the back end of your knife across it, it will flatten it out a little bit. Useful tip. And if you're worried about not having enough bacon, just buy extra. And if you have too much, what you do with that is you grill it and you put it between two bits of bread with some brown sauce and you've got the best sarni ever. Anyway, filling the terrine. Do it in stages. Don't try to get it all in in one go. And I'm going to use a fork. The reason I use a fork is because it allows any air bubbles to escape out. We don't want little pockets of air. We want this to be very well compacted. So take your time with this bit, lots of love and attention. And then what I'm going to do, down the middle, run three strips of the pheasants. I mean, you can see what I'm doing, I don't really need to talk, but we love the sound of my voice, so I'm going to keep going. And then some more meat on top of that. So give it a really good press. Those bay leaves, by the way, completely optional. I just think they look nice. Whether or not they actually give much flavor, I don't know. Anyway, that's boiling water from the kettle. There's a little J-cloth underneath that's just to insulate a little bit. And this is where really I'm an idiot. Why didn't I do this outside of the tray and then put it in? Anyway, I was burning my fingers. Sometimes I'm just stupid. Anyway, that is after about an hour or so, in 160 degrees, I'm using my thermometer to check. I want it to be at least 70 centigrade or over. Achieved. Um, that's around about, I think I put the, um, there it is, 160 Fahrenheit. I think it's important to press a terrine in the fridge. So what I've got, a little bit of cardboard, which I cut to just about the right size wrapped it in tin foil, like so. We'll get 
get that in the fridge overnight with some tins. That jelly is really quite salty, so I threw it away, but it would be perfect if you were making some pork pies. Otherwise, don't worry about keeping it. Let's see what it looks like. Absolutely gorgeous. Look at it. I'm very pleased with that. So it tasted great. What I will say is, in about two days time, it will be even better, a little bit of time to marinate. And I'm gonna share the video I've done for this piccalilli. And that again, that piccalilli will be better in a couple of weeks time, but absolutely gorgeous. I'm very, very pleased with the way that's turned out. If you have a go, let me know. Let me know, put some comments below. Any questions, I'll be happy to answer. So thank you again for watching Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. I hope you're enjoying my videos. I'm loving making them and I would love to keep going, making more and more and more. So if you like them, it would help me if you subscribe, give me thumbs up, comment and share and all those sorts of things. And this channel will develop and grow and that will be just wonderful. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Thank you, bye.